Now, deeply divided EU leaders are gearing up for a summit this Thursday. German Chancellor Angela Merkel insists there will be no debt sharing in Europe. It's a stance that will not sit well with troubled states such as Spain and Italy. Uh, for more on the disagreements in the EU ahead of the upcoming summit, are now joined by Johann van Overtfelder, editor-in-chief of Trends magazine, live here on RT. Thanks for joining us today. As you all heard, uh, Merkel facing increasing pressure from countries like Italy, Spain and France over her stand against debt sharing in the EU. Who's going to win this round? Well, uh, my feeling is that uh, Mrs. Merkel will uh, keep to her point and that she won't uh, uh, give the German credit card, if you allow me to put it that way, to the other countries without uh, having sufficient degree of control over what these other countries are doing in terms of expenditure and uh, economic policy in general. Now, Italian and Spanish borrowing costs have again risen after Merkel's tough comments against euro bonds. And there's a view that Germany may be doing it on purpose to keep the pressure on Rome and Madrid. What do you make of that? Well, uh, maybe not uh, directly in terms of uh, trying to uh, making the, mar the markets even more nervous, but it's quite clear that one of the basic elements that is present in the German attitude is that they fear that if uh, the, the, the pressure on these countries to uh, change their economic structure, to rein in their government expenditures and uh, all the other structural th things they need to do, if that pressure is lowered, they won't do anything. So it's a question about uh, whether the glass is half full or half empty. Uh, the Germans are saying first we need firm commitments, controllable commitments, irrevocable commitments and then we can talk about solidarity and eventual German support for solidarity mechanisms and, and other types of interventions. Whereas the French and the Italians are saying let's do it the other way around. First money and then sol first solidarity and then commitment. Well as we know, as we know there are several uh, Eurozone members that have been stumbling, that have needed bailouts. Certainly Germany is bearing the brunt as the EU's largest economy to prop up some of the uh, stumbling, uh, stumbling members uh, of the neighborhood there. But the question is, how dangerous a position is Germany in? Shouldering the brunt of bailouts here, lifting up the Eurozone economy. Uh, what happens if Germany's investments in these stumbling members goes down? Well, uh, like Mrs. Merkel said uh, a few weeks ago, even the German economy in itself is not strong enough to support all uh, these burdens uh, coming out of countries like Greece, Portugal, Ireland, small countries, but now we're talking much bigger game, we're talking about Spain and Italy. There's of course always the scapegoat of the European Central Bank and uh, my feeling is that uh, when we would have a real uh, dissolution with this summit and markets react, react very strongly on Monday, uh, that we will see the ECB either directly or indirectly uh, taking things into its hands again. But of course that's only trying to gain some time that can never be a structural solution to this uh, crisis in the Eurozone. Now we're also hearing reports that uh, Greece might try to re negotiate its bailout agreements with the EU as a payback for the sacrifices it's made. Do you think the EU could be willing to soften its demands? Well, uh, I think it's pretty sure that the Greek want really a renegotiation and uh, it's a kind of Machiavellian play that is uh, being played here because the Greeks perfectly know that the rest of Europe is very afraid of uh, an exit of Greece and all the potential chaos that can come with that. So uh, there might be even some indirect threats if you don't help us, well, uh, take care of all the things that come after that. So we will certainly see a renegotiation on the Greek uh, bailout package and it has already been uh, pointed out by several European officials that the way to go about this is to insist on structural reform in the Greek economy and then to be more lenient in terms of their budget objectives and the savings they need to do to achieve uh, those uh, objectives. Johanna van Overtvelder, editor-in-chief of Trends magazine, thank you for coming on RT today.